Power outages create a food safety hazard. I'm here today to talk with Chef Vincent Massa about preventing foodborne illnesses. So Vince, a storm's coming. What are our concerns with food safety? So one of your main concerns with food safety is your fridge is obviously going down and then your food getting into that danger zone between uh, 40 and 140 degrees because it's going to start growing pathogens and bacteria from there and those are the things that are going to get your family sick. Okay. So if I keep my fridge doors closed, how long can that, my food stay in there? About 24 hours. If you keep everything sealed in your refrigerator without opening and closing it and letting any heat in, your freezer about 48 hours. Gotcha. So how long can it be in the danger zone before I need to throw it out? About two hours. If you can cool it down again after another two hours, um, you should be okay. But anywhere two to four hours in that danger zone between 40 and 140, I would say throw it out, don't even try it, and you know, don't take the chance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just keep it hot or keep it cold. Keep it hot or keep it cold. Gotcha. So if you see the forecast and you see that the storm may potentially knock out your power, mm -hmm. um, with all your raw items like your ground beef or your chicken or anything like that that you're afraid that you might not have enough room in your cooler to store or anything that you, know, you have a concern about, you can always cook your items um, and cook it above 140, chicken's 165 cook it all the way through and then cool it down on ice or in your refrigerator before the power goes out to under 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good way that you can just kind of pull something out and slice it up and feed your family, like the chicken, you can make a nice chicken salad. Okay, how long will my chicken last after I cook it? Uh, cooked chicken will last about five days in the fridge. So you can definitely prepare ahead of time, um, a week ahead. You can look at the forecast and kind of see where you're at and what you think the best move is for your family. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you think I should go out and get a bunch of canned goods as well? So the items that you should definitely stock up on for a storm would be like canned tuna. If you want a proteins, they have canned chicken too. Um, they have cooked uh, quinoa and bulgur and all these grains that are already kind of cooked in the bag that you can just kind of mix and match, put things together to feed your family with these really cool power bowls. Stock up on lots of fruit. Uh, canned goods like tomatoes and beans, uh, all those high protein items that are going to kind of be substantial for you and your family that you'll be okay throughout the storm without having to cook really. Gotcha. So I have multiple coolers. How should I organize my foods based on which cooler to put it in? So you should put your raw proteins in one cooler mm -hmm. and then your other like fruits and vegetables or cooked proteins, even dairy in a separate one, but definitely separate your raw and not raw stuff. Um, if you're just working with one cooler, say you have one decent sized cooler, mm -hmm. put all of your proteins that are uncooked on the bottom, especially chicken. So okay. chicken on the bottom first, and then you kind of move up to ground beef, pork, seafood, and then dairy, um, and then your cooked stuff above that. And what is cross-contamination? That's raw food to not raw food, or is it raw foods to raw foods? It can be raw food to raw food. It could be um, raw to not raw. Um, so if I have raw chicken on my cutting board, I wouldn't grab a thing of grapes and put it on the same cutting board because that that bacteria from the chicken is going to get on those grapes, um, especially because I'm not cooking those grapes. I'm just going to start eating them or cutting them or something. Right. Um, so you're ready to eat foods and you're not ready to eat foods, I would definitely separate um, to avoid that cross-contamination. Is there any way I could clean my food to prevent cross-contamination? Not really. Um, I mean, you can always just give everything a good rinse off, um, which you should do. You should always rinse everything off. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no really way to prevent that other than just using two different cutting boards or wiping things down and sanitizing and cleaning in between projects. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Sweet, thank you. Thank you. A power outage is frustrating, but cooking for your family doesn't have to be. Check out Central Hudson's video recipes that feature easy, tasty meals that you can make without a stove or oven.